Alright, we're back with part two of the red ballot. Ballet? Let's see, I think we're supposed to be at the building where they do their stuff, I guess. Remodeled to fit a modern idea of architecture seven years ago. I don't think it looks as nice without the arch pillars calling it the calling on the Renaissance. It's a rectangle, plain and simple, and the glass panels reflect the afternoon sun. Shielding the dancers during the rehearsal from prying eyes. During evenings and dark winter days, I could see them from the store. The middle to the rehearsal room was not obscured by light. They were dancing when I came here in the morning and still twirling on busted pointy shoes when I left for home. How I envied them. They fought, cried, and bled for their dream. Mine felt so, so far away. Out of reach, hidden behind a glass panel, obscured by the light of the afternoon sun. I'm being dramatic. I started walking closer to the building. I felt like I didn't belong in there and that someone was going to stop me in my tracks. The hell do you think you're doing? But no one was even out here, much less looking my way. My paw trembles as I put it against the freezing metal handlebar used to open the thick doors. The door was surprisingly light. Is this aluminum? Let's go inside. Who the fuck cares if it's aluminum? Hmm, such a stupid idea. If I go in anyway, they pretty much promised Emilio to come. How could be he be waiting for me? Likely but possible. The first thing to strike me is the pot puree smell emanating from the front desk. A woman sits by the counter, a pair of very business-like headphones over her short and fuzzy black and white ears. The thought of that pot puree was placed by her on account of being a skunk flashed in my mind, but I made that thought pass. The same ideas people had about me. It's hard to keep such antique ideas out. I'm practically taught in school. If not by a textbook, it's from the teachers and students treating you differently. Pacing up to the counter, telling myself the question I'm about to ask over and over, she holds up a claw to my face. So I get that month here, but these things take time. Okay, she nullably sighs. A claw is really against the computer and keyboard. So this thing take time. For future reference, at least a month, especially Anya. No one's face scrunches up. You appreciate your offer, but I must decline at this moment in time. Have a good day. Shrekly slams the side of her headphones. She inhales sharply before acknowledging me with a glance. Can you give me a second? I'm mm, sure. She goes out of her little chair, hopping off it by using her short arm to take off and slinks into the door behind her. I hear a muffled noise from the other side of the wall, somewhere between death throw and a broken car revving up. It lasts for no more than five seconds before the skunk came out again, climbing on top of the chair like the nothing had happened. Hello, what can I help you with? Um, looking for someone? She blinks thrice. The dancers are too busy with her supposed to be bothered right now, I'm afraid. Dancers, I assumed they would be. I'm just looking for Emilio. Go quite tall, um, said her lips lift up for the first time since I met her. Emilio, you should have told me from the start. I rather much rather help a, a friend of Emilio's rather than some creepy client. Creepy, how so? She raised her hand. You know, well, Emilio should still be here. He looked a little bit ill today, so I'm sure he appreciate you coming to see him. I'm not entirely sure where he is at the moment. At the point, this point, we don't have a ballet today, so he might be backstage just adjusting the lights for tomorrow. You know the way. I've never been here, of course, but I think I had a pretty good idea where to go. Yeah. Thanks for the help. Okay, maybe I overestimated how well I will be able to navigate the building based on just observing it from the outside. These doors to the ballet stage. I motion to open one of the doors to check, but I hear shoes crashing against the carpet behind me. I heard the panic panting and reaching my ears before I even had time to turn around. Hello? I feel a paw on my shoulder making me jump out of my skin. Crimson furred paw dig claw into my shirt, the claw tearing at its seams. 
the panting is now in my ear, but the arm behind me makes it difficult to turn further than being able to see a dark, wet muzzle. Don't tell me it's coming. I don't know what the... What the fuck? Who's coming? I twist with a grunt to get out of the arm lock, but there's no one there. I can still feel the moisture and the warm breath in my neck fur, but there's simply another door behind me. Put a paw against my neck. I pull it back, I can see a blotch of blood on my fingers. Hair where that was must have left a mark on me. Still warm. Strands of fur drooping with heavy liquid. The blood seemed to dissipate for a moment. But when it happened to them, for there to be so much blood, where had they simply vanished to? I look around me again, but there's no one, no sign of them at all. No speaking door, no bloody footprints, nothing. I was sent here to see if I can pick up the scent of something to go on, but it merely smells vaguely of popcorn and dry soda. Must be the cinema then. Popcorn and pop aren't exactly ballet snacks. Wish I knew how I could help that person, but if I can't find them, Leo definitely isn't here. He only ever talked about the dancers, so it's unlikely he would work in the cinema. He also smelled musky from physical labor. I just still miasma of families with kids gorging on the world with their popcorn, spilling their diet sodas across the floor and seats without a second thought to who had to clean them up after them. I hated it when they came into the store to get stuff to smuggle in. I took the decision to save money, but did the kids have to touch everything? It's ironic with the way their parents give me uncomfortable looks as I hand them their change back, really not checking who was working the register. All the while, their spawns look in the ice cream freezer to see if their tongues will get stuck from the cold. Wait. I hear a melody from Swan Lake coming from somewhere. It's a song I've heard a hundred times, so unmistakable. I follow the sound as if I'm entranced by a siren. I end up at a set of doors. There's only one entrance, I don't think it could lead to the ballet hall. I must follow the music. On the floor pattern doors letting out a silver of sliver of fluorescent light. Carefully tread on the carpet floor. Feels like I'm not supposed to do this. This dance rehearsal room. Through the opening door, I can see the clutter of a woman gathered a few fair few steps from the entrance. The group consists of three women, I think. I go and see one of them fully, a tall deer with dark eyes and white dots like stars spread across her exposed tawny arms. It seemed like they were in the middle of rehearsal. Shouldn't be talking about this. She sounds hesitant, those large, dark eyes flickering towards the door. I check my nose from the opening. Did she see me? Nobody just spoils, spoils for a diva. The mistress isn't here. Now she isn't, allegedly. Sometimes I think she has cameras in here, but how she shows up out of thin air to reprimand us. I look around for this mistress lady, suddenly anxious, she really will materialize behind me. What does blame me then? Gosh, did Tyne tell you about what happened? In the way he tells anyone nothing? Sure, but yeah, he did. Art, um, I'll say Art, got jumped on the way home from the after party. What? Like jump? Jumped? A classic brawl? She sounded excited at the idea. Brawl? There was no brawl. His face needed like 20 stitches. Oh, that's not the end of the world. Anya. Anya, the Anya? I was four minutes away from the frost dicks and herself. During a caution in the wind, I stuck half my muzzle to the door. Why would you say? Okay, he is a bison. The why is he even a ballerina? You better suit to be well behind the scenes if you catch my drift. I don't know. I kind of like the little fringe he has. Mm -hmm. Snickers and lines on Tosh forehead wrinkle as she follows suit. Dia rolls her eye, standing here point T pointy shoe on the floor, a little low clack. You're gonna tell the story or just really poor art? He was attacked, you know. So it isn't funny. You just say that because you're probably related. More snickering. He was nostrils flaring in indignation. Indignation. So, 
She shakes her head wildly, strands of hair loosening from the light, tight bun on her head. She stomps across the room on those long legs, drawing one of them up at the bar as she reaches the wall near the side. She's such a bleeding heart. I hear heels aggressively clicking against the floor, coming closer by the second. I attach myself from the door as quick as I can. The temperature is still coming from around the corner, but it sounds like I have only mere moments to make my escape. I turn the other way and hurry, hoping the owner of those shoes takes me for a worker here. I don't hear someone yelling at me, so I just slam the door to the rehearsal room. Now, this is certainly ostentatious enough to truly be the interest in the ballet hall. It seems rather obvious what they put the money into. It might feel like a way to get the extra money, mostly to finance the true gem of the building. Should the ballet brought in richer patrons, but the cinema could show movies 24 7 if, so, if they so pleased. They actually, on the other hand, had their rest, or at least rehearse. And Paul trailed along the lake yard. Blackyard wooden pan rails leading up to the stairs of the second story seats. There was a slight hint of something to the waterfall pattern wood. Lavender? Not typically what I associated with cleaning products, but the bottle I had at home was some cheap citrus thing I had permanently borrowed from work. Looking upstairs, the lights are off. I wouldn't really want to go up there after hours anyway. So I walked through the opening in front of me. The light in here is blinding me. You have thought no show today would have meant they would at least save my electricity. While adjusting my eyes, they are still flashing red. I realize I'm really in here. Somehow I thought it would be harder. Anyone could waltz in here, huh? Make my way through the large hall, scanning the seats for anyone there. This room could probably fit 2,000 people. Is that really this popular? So the game it did have a lot of ties to rosia as well as being a cultural hub but still i feel like an old people thing none of my friends at school they were gotten why i liked it if anything they got all silent when i tried to talk about it we're moving on to another subject and the rapid onset of technological growth most people kept to watching the movies in the comfort of their own home couldn't really afford a computer but i did have my phone sometimes when i get all all the Ola wasn't too busy. We had movie nights with her laptop lying in her bed with facial mask on. There were a lot of ballet themed films, but those were my favorite. No one if I should ask Emilio to sneak me in here during being selfish again. He's on my damn free ticket into this place. I'm gone all the way to the stage by now. The white gap from the front row and the step edge of the stage is filled with empty sheet music stands. The Red Ballet doesn't skimp on this ballet, even having a live orchestra for most of his plays. There's no Emilio here either. He has completely in the reception had been wrong. It would seem he had probably gone home by now. Can you be upset with the way I have faffed about the whole building at this point? I take a look at my phone. 17.45. That's how I had hoped for a romantic evening in the theater with him. I held where his day had been. Being around me would make it better for that grin to be put back on his face. Hmm. So I alone see the paper in one of the stands. Okay, hop down to the orchestra hole. I pick it up with my paws. I recognize this part. I wonder who I use this play a cellist, cellist, or a violinist. The music seemed to want to play in my head. The body moves on its own. Up the hidden steps of stairs leading up to the ground floor, we went onto the stage. These shoes I have won't do, they're clunky, but good enough to walk in. I kicked them off, middle of the stage. I hear the color hall's eyes on me. The spotlight heat radiates through my pores, sweat breaking through my layer of makeup that matched my dark fur. The strings wake up, struck in by the vibrato of the cello and the wooden box that orchestra pit. I bow to the audience, their gazes lift me up, all to my perfect form as I spring into my initial... Poet? Poetry? I'm butchering all these words, I am so sorry. The pads on my toes burn as they support the entirety of my weight, but the motion holds. 
I managed to stop in lower rotation despite my socks. I smile through the concentration and the wrinkles on my face softening. I let the music guide me as it starts to swell. My knees bend into the pile. Pele. Extending into the... Oh. Relief. Relief. My toes sleep across the floor on the half moon. Here it comes. Arm extending outwards. Slowly, slowly. My balance holds. Left leg starts the extension backwards. My back arching into a sharp angle. Now my leg is at a 90 degrees angle backwards. The toes of my right foot scream at me. Exhale. I slowly move back into a narrow position. Both feet against the floor. I hear clapping behind me. When I turn onto the backstage, there is a shallow figure beyond the curtains. A very large figure, their presence towering over me all the way from over there. I feel minuscule, more exposed than I did with the hundreds of imagined eyes during my dance. My feet, white socks tanning from the thin film of dirt of the stage shuffle, share locked against each other. Well, the performance, not even any pointy shoes on, you held that obscure as if your life depended on it. A large figure moves closer, the lad spotlight bathing his face in light. I was a bit confused, however. I believe I would have remembered one such as you. Race when lit, yes, but a rat. I have no such ballerinos. Shit. So I wonder how this rat managed to scurry inside my theater. This theater? This was the owner? He will learn than almost anyone I ever met before. But he had been two meters tall, more. I'm glad he's staying over there for now. The way he speaks has a calm to it, but I get the feeling that it's the same way one speaks to a child who has misbehaved. The blood that had pumped through my body from the exertion of dance was draining down to my feet. The spotlights are warmer than the sun during a high season. Speak up, boy. I do not have all day. As you may be able to surmise, I am a very busy man. And your mouth does not seem to work at the same speed or elegance as your feet. I'm sorry, sir. I was looking for someone. What, you were trying to summon this someone by dance? Are you called them, or what? I, I do not know, Rosian. You dance ballet in my theater and do not even know the language of the ballet. Bah. But it does not seem that you have found your spirit, despite that delectable Delectable, yeah, delectable dance. It did, however, summon me, so perhaps it was not entirely devoid of magic, no. The way this man speaks is confusing. I'm having a hard time grasping the actual meaning of his words. The accusations are adorned with appreciation. The smiles are dripping with intent. I should leave. Get out of your hair. My hair is not easy to deweb yourself from. It is full of pompade. pomade. Okay. I would much prefer if it if you stay. Shit, he's gonna call the cops on me. You don't treat people like me with an ounce of kindness. Do not look so much like, ah, uh, what do you say here? Like you're gonna soil your pants. I will forgive this transgression after all, if you give me. Oh. Is that like a French thing or something? But where are my manners? Perchance, it would be prudent to at least tell you my name before such an action be taken, though. My name is Mikhail. Um. Let's call you Mikhail. We may simply call you Misha. Okay, Misha, thank you. We'll call you Misha. And yours? The demand, not a question. Sid? Just Sid? What do you need? A full government name and ID number? Yeah. Why do you want to tell this with a kiss? Why? Because I found your dance irresistible. Clearly you're not classically trained. There is a rawness to your steps and edge to your twirls, like a spinning top out of control. A diamond not yet to cut perfection. Here's a kiss, and a promise to see me tomorrow for dinner. I wish to discuss your prospective future here, under me. That sounds dirty. I mean to say for you to work here, your potential is clear to see for an eye such as mine. So seal it with a kiss. 
He's gonna kill me if I don't accept it. I feel it. I feel it. He's like one of those like I'm nice until I get told no. She doesn't realize kissing him means to get near his enormous frame. But his jaws within reach of my throat, so he'd be overcome with instinct. I wrestle closer, part of his gullet completely alone. Who would even be able to do anything after he's torn my skin into long shreds, gorging along my intestines? No, he could run. The only one who had seen me in here was a receptionist, and this man was her boss. But this could lead me to realize that dream. If he moved not on their own, every single step would struggle. A desperate command from my brain fighting against fear. Steve show through the grin. You enjoying this? See my hesitation? He's playing with his food. My sister's voice echoes through my head. She had warned me of this so many times. I am now before him. I can feel the heat radiating through his suit as I look up at him. Oh my god. He put a giant paw on my chin. It loves me, holding me steady. I can even run if I try. Well, he's a bear, you can't run anyway. Coffee and honey. Okay. Okay. That's wink on his eye. Okay. See, I'm not that bad. Now that that's out of the way, is it not time my little rats carry out of my theater for the night? See you tomorrow, then. 1900 on the dot by the reception. He nods his head in my steed. Good, I'm sure you can make your way on out. You managed to get all the way in. Only did you turn the lights on in here? I shake my head. He turns calm and disappearing past the curtains. That was not what I was expecting. He's actually considering hiring. It's not real. I don't even know if he is the actual damn owner. Looks the part, rich suit, richer than smile, riches of egos. It would be rather embarrassing if he kissed a random guy for no reason. Again, what do I even do? I should keep looking for Emilio, but I need to talk to Agua. I hope she's home from her more professional encounter with a pretty different kind of animal. Damn, never kissed another person beside from other rats, and now it's two in as many days. Okay, lights are gone. Let's flash for a moment before completely shutting off. I guess they do actually turn the lights off when there isn't a show. This isn't entirely made for me on whether to look familiar or not. I half sh shuffle, half crawl my way throughout the dark hall. The only thing I have to go by are backrests, lining up the seats going up to the exit. And droplets of rain are illuminated by the flickering lights of the street lights, and dancing around the air like dying fire fireflies. The bus home had broken down, of course, but I had decided to just walk the last stretch. Twenty minutes in a merely cloudy sky ago, I kind of regret it. At least I'm already completely drenched. No need to keep up the pretense of staying out of the rain, sprinting from each other's stores, rain awnings. It's actually rather peaceful. The streets are more or less empty, aside from some cars driving their way home. Or people in the cars, I guess. I've heard there are some new cars that's already on the market down in Alec Boulon. Alec Boulon. That ain't need a driver. Maybe that works on the huge open roads going between metropolitan and cities there. But the motorways here in the Union are known for being spacious. And in the cities, people take the bus one stop just to not be run over. Which is another reason I'm managing to appreciate this walk. My reflection flashes by as I walk through a dark window. And look. Well, I look like a drowned rat, but there's a grin on my face. I'm trying to keep my elation under rats, but I could actually have a chance. What the fuck? Huh? You know, two stories up stands her balcony with a cigarette between her hooves. I give her a finger and speed up my walk as the dodge the smoking stick she flicks down at me. I was near at home, which forced me to side with Tawawa. She's never she's never the optimist, so I'm not sure if uh wait with celebration is something I can expect from her. Oh rat Christ, don't let her pull me along for a brawl crawl. My toes still hurt from the dance and this rain wasn't helping, soaking through my worn shoes and absorbed into my socks. But I was in a good mood. Yeah, I would, actually. 
And get inside, dripping water all over the door rug. I will. I don't know what's that in the on the TV. It looks weird. I only get the low hum in the lit living room lamp in response. Weird. She was usually back by now. Oh well, I can at least get changed in the meantime. I go into my bedroom. Sorry for the mess. Who are you talking to? Get my shirt off and drop it to the floor as I dig through the closet. What do we have? What do we wear? Miley pink shirt or another Miley pink shirt? Why do I have so many? I feel. What am I saying? I hear the sound of the key in the door. Hmm? Her boot slamming to the floor like she's chasing a bug and throwing her bedroom door closed. The wall seems to shake. I walk on the tips of my throbbing toes out of my room, standing by our door. Ah, well, there's no answer. Are you okay? Silence. I stand there for a while. This has never happened before. Something must have happened. I knew she wouldn't have gone to that place. It's dangerous for so many reasons. I would please. If. Tell me if there's anything I can do. She's still not responding. I can't even hear any sobbing. The paws rest on the door handle. I don't know what to do. She would know, but whatever I decide, I can't help but feel like it'll make things worse. Action or inaction. Let's see what action does. She would check on me. I know it. Careful when the door is and I startle her. The room is dark, the blackout blinds pull down, and only the light from the living room makes its way in. I can't see her. I take a step inside to the side of her bed. Her eyes, her white eyes, fix me with tiny pupils. She let her jack on the floor next to her, her body only covered by a torn bra, so it's a bloody fur sticking to her in clumps. Damn. Get this right now, please just leave. But you're hurt. Don't talk to me. She raises her paw and points to the door. You're fucking sick. Why did you even go in? You could have stayed out. What do you mean? I was worried. I would not be worried. She doesn't say anything else. What does she mean I'm sick? I don't know what you mean. Because she's in shock. Should I call an ambulance? The police? Good God Almighty. Outside, why am I outside? I was in Alice's room. She was in that awful state. Go there, bite through my shirt, nibbling away at my skin. No reason for me being out here, why couldn't I at least have it put on a jacket? Where even is out here? I look around, but I don't recognize the street. We have to be sleeping, I guess. I feel my eyes on me, but I don't actually see anyone. Alleyways run like veins through narrow openings between the house and living over me. I'm so tired. I turn my head to sharpen my hearing. I think there's a slight bass vibrating through the ground. I hear it now. Some music. I try to feel the vibrations in the ground more so than following the sound. This is how our ancestors now get in the tunnels after all. It leads me to step to a steep step of steps. Steep set of steps in one of the alleyways. Is this some sort of well underground party? I send the steps. Music is definitely coming from here. This corridor smells like a stale piss or perhaps stale beer. You never tell the difference. I keep walking through the red miasma, the music and vibrations growing ever louder. I am face to face with a door. This is the third door I'm opening today with a terrible feeling of, in my gut. Uh. I sit up straight, I look around wildly. Home. Oh, they're opening the door. I did blast my eardrums. My ears still feel sore. But it was a dream. 
And that's why I can't remember what I saw in there. Someone, I think. Could have been something. No matter how much I try, I can't remember what I saw. Except for flashing lights of different colors. Damn, Mawa. Get up from my bed, rush into the living room. She's sitting on the sofa with her feet on the table, laptop in her lap. I look to where I had seen the blotch of blood last night. I see no sign of a wound, but the fur on her chest is thick and could easily conceal it if it wasn't a wide cut. Morning, Sid. Why are you looking at me like that? My eyes are up here, by the way. It's just a, the hand on my neck rubbing the sermon muscle underneath. You were acting so weird last night. And the way you were talking, it's like you weren't yourself. She gives me a puzzled look, the laptop hanging off her leg, one side resting on the sofa. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Sid. Are you okay? You're not even wearing a shirt yet. Look down on my exposed stomach, the slight chill in the room, making my first stand on it. Neither are you. That's not the point. Something was wrong last night, I know what- I, you can tell me what happened. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I got home somewhere around 8, took a shower, and went to bed. I was tired. It's not what happened. You were in a whole state. Slamming the door, stomping around. You were even bleeding. <laughs> bleeding? I think I would have remembered that. I threw my hands in the air, feeling annoyed that she was being so dodgy about this. I just wanted to help, but she was acting like I was crazy. Maybe you ought to go back to sleep. Unless you want to talk about your dress yesterday with that ram. Huh? Oh. And more or less forgotten that I had told her about meeting up with Emilio yesterday. That really might make her at the moment. Are you sure you're acting okay? Yes, said I'm perfectly fine. What do you want me to do to prove it? Make some jumping jacks? Maybe I'll break at my seams and start bleeding all over the carpet like you fear. If you don't want to tell me, I guess I can tell you about what happened. I catch her up behind and end up finding Emilio anywhere. I don't think she'd take me seriously about that weird encounter by the cinemas. Considering how blase she's acting about my concerns for her, so I don't mention it. Hell said you kissed the bear. And you, who were all don't go to the predator bar yesterday? Is that how she got that wound? It has to be. I kissed him because I was scared shitless. Why? Because he owns the ballet? Or because he's the biggest scary predator who's gonna eat you? Yes, on both accounts. I bet you kiss him simply because he's big. Huh? She rolls her eyes and snorts. She said, you have a type. No, I don't. Come on, Ada wasn't definitely on the tiny side either. Are you basing my type off my ex? Like every guy you brought here. Yeah, that's not, um, sure what the old badger in science class had called it. Big enough sample size to establish a scientific hypothesis. She laughs, pointing a claw at me. You're making it so easy. I'm talking about your penchant for big boys. And here you go quoting our old Mr. Muller. I, uh, he was like 60 when we were in high school. You couldn't keep your eyes on him when I asked him for help and he bent over to see what I was pointing at in my book. You. You're a demon, I, uh, I had his ass in my face every class because of you. She leaned back on the sofa, hands behind her head. She looked real pleased with herself. Take a payment in chocolate or dirty magazines. Dirty magazines? You have a computer, and you're not a geriatric. Here's an eyebrow leaning forward slightly. You don't get it, Sid. The magazines are timeless magic. You're insufferable. Thanks. I realize she's turned things way off any other topics I want to talk to her about. She's gay too, despite her side hustle, but mention a guy around her, and she ends up speeding straight through to the heart of the matter. Or a midsection, a few inches below the navel of the matter to be more exact. And Misha, the bear that is, invited me over. Or, as play, bondage, water sports, role playing, ballet instructor, and a ballet dancer, Dom Daddy, Lil Rock. <laughs> Fine, don't play that game. I saw her getting my thoughts together to get out what I have to say while she's busy soaping. He wants to discuss the possibility of me working for him. As what? I wouldn't bet on your climbing abilities as a stagehand. 
Your Bob's grateful for changing the light bulb as a good fish. And it was a dancer. Huh? Why do you look so shocked? I'm a good dancer. It's not that I know you are. So that comfortable for a moment. Black claw scratching against the mellow chassis of her laptop. I have for you, obviously, I'm just... It feels too good to be true. I feel the twitch of her. If I know her and my species aren't that different, the sense that there are a lot of restrictions on us. Hairs may not be seen as vermin, but their long pretty legs and stereotypes, stereotypes of being good for breeding activities pushes us both into certain roles. You hear what you mean, but what if it is true? Should I at least try? I'm sick of being stuck here. Well, here with me? Of course not. You're one of the few good things in my life. I mean, in this life, and you're able to move forward. I want to be something, someone, so badly. She's my bra, leave her sadness still present in her eyes. Then you already have the answer to the question you're trying to ask. Act first, think later. That's what I would do. And if it fits, too good to be true. You get an expensive meal and probably a finger done to the table by a rich bear. Of course, that's what she would say. I don't even know why I felt like I had to ask her for her opinion on the matter. But getting it, I feel my resolve still. Yeah, you're right. I'll raise her. And what raises her paw, thumb and index finger meeting in a circle around the neck of a free tin wine glass. Two dance and getting finger banged. <laughs> I fell asleep with emotion. Yeah, the dance and getting finger banged under the table. The pop snaps back to my side. I hear my phone starting up its ringtone. The ringtone is really stressful. Okay. Um, this is it, right? Not if this is someone trying to sell me something. Oh, well, wait. You until you hear about the new sucking function of our new vacuum. Hang it up now. No, wait. My claw hovers over the red and call button. It's Emilio. Sorry, I probably should have just started with that. I uh, purses her lips and flutters her eyelashes. See, how could you? You're the soft like people in the inventory room. You're tearing this family apart. Think about Sid Rita. What will she do without a father? My rat, Jesus, Abba. Please know her. She's deranged. Your wife? Um, Alba makes a gurgling noise, pushing two fingers down her throat. She starts to cough, apparently going too far with her theatrics. She's my roommate. But not for too long. Aw, babe. You'll never be rid of me. And it's cute, I think. Uh, if you're done with your marital spat, I can explain why I'm calling. And how you're calling? Oh, I went to the store you work at. Grumpy Pig gave me your number. It seems really illegal. Yeah, what if that was a crazy stalker? Good thing I'm not a stalker that is. It's crazy is omitted from that. <laughs> well, I'm calling to tell you, I'm sorry. I heard from the Brie receptionist that you came to look for me. But I had already left without telling her. But it didn't feel too hot. You definitely didn't look yourself when we met. I'm sorry, I want to make it up to you though. What Sid told me, I can see what that might mean. He told you what a good boy he was taking my... Please remind me never to let you be in the same room together. You're such a prude. <laughs> Great, you're ganging up on me. So what did you have in mind? What would you say to meeting up later tonight? I'm guessing you ain't working today, going off of the not as cute pig being there. But we can meet when I'm off. Oh, I'm supposed to meet Misha tonight. I feel like that's a bit more important than my future at stake and all. If I meet quite later, I have plans at 7. It's just dinner, right? I may have kissed him, but that's just weird power play. It's a professional dinner to discuss what I can bring to the ballet troupe. Should take longer than 9, I think. Of course, of course, we ain't dating. What do you mean? Your 7 thing is a date, right? No. It's not. Uh, don't worry, I ain't judging. Have fun. Call me though. I'm not sure where I'll be by nine. You have a little day too. Well, I think I think a jealousy running through my stomach. He's right, we ain't dating. Sure you have fun too. Ciao then. Give me the best to the wife. Give me the best to the wife. Mwah. 
phone goes down and my paw with a click. Clear the screen, it was number flashing three times before it goes to my background screen. A long leg antelope in a cream colored tutu raises her leg backwards, her arms extend over her head. But I like him already. Not to fire my gun before my draw, but I wouldn't mind you and him becoming a thing. Who knows, maybe you'll have more than one ex. See her out of the corner of my eye, my gaze still fixed on my phone. What's wrong, Sid? Hmm? I am kind of down for someone with two dates in one day. I told you we should end a date. I don't think I even like him like that. Unless she scares me. So you said Emilio, cheer up. She didn't get it. I feel like Emilio and I had a real connection, but I realized that's stupid. He literally just hooked up on the damn inventory room. Of course he's not that invested in me. I should be glad he even wants to see me. <laughs> yes, you're right. I always am. Anyway, you have hours to kill before you're not date with Misha. You have plans? No, not really. Then get your ass on the sofa. We can watch that swan movie you like so much. That swan movie? You're so crass. She bends over the side of the sofa, yanking my arm, hard my ass, smacks into it. I'm on the verge of folding over it. Sit down. Do me sit down because you're getting on the shirt, but I always say she doesn't want any heterosexual behavior in her own home. Alright, well, it seems like a good time to need to save. Hit that main menu because we have a plan for a minute. Um, so that's the red ballet. This is part two. We played this before. I will be finishing this game. Um, so hopefully y'all um stay tuned for that. If not, that's purely up to you. Um, if this is your first time watching, this is part two, by the way. You should probably already know that. Um and I, I lost my thought. But um everything for this game will be in the um description below if y'all are curious about this game and you want to play for yourselves i kind of forgot about it briefly because i had a couple other things going on um besides this game but i will be keeping up with this and um the sword bearer i'm still debating on that because of the several episodes i kind of just want to play it myself but we're working on all of that so I'm just gonna end it here so I don't ramble on too much. But we are enjoying the story so far. We got two dates with Misha and um, Emilio, or one not day and one date. But yeah, we'll we'll see what goes on next part. So that being said, I'm gonna end it here. So hope you all had a good day, good yesterday, and uh, better tomorrow. And I will catch y'all in the next video.